Okay, I'm uh, Jessica Buck. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Technology. I serve as program coordinator for the technology education uh, master's degree program. And several of my colleagues mentioned on today about utilizing smartphones in our learning process. So what I want to do for a moment is to just uh, talk about a little bit about how we can use smartphones and our smartphone applications, as well as these same applications that can be used on tablets to enhance our learning. Also, it works well for enhancing our pedagogy as teachers, as well as attracting and appealing to the 21st century learner. And that 21st century learner are our students who are in school now. We have to find a way to appeal to them. What is the 21st century learner? But in short, the 21st century learner is that learner who works at collaboration, problem solving, critical thinking, or at least they should be working in those areas, but also those who are digitally literate. And that's the point that we're wanting to get to make sure that they're digitally literate. Now, how are we using cell phones? Most of us can attest that we have students who come to our classes and they're texting. Some of them may even try to text answers to a quiz that we're giving if we don't watch them. I personally have a no texting uh, statement in my syllabus or in my, uh, all of my course syllabi just to ensure that they're not texting, but that's still not a surefire mechanism. But we can see the various ways in which students are utilizing their phones, but what we're wanting to do is make sure that we can apply this in a student-centered learning environment. Um, when I think of that, I think about philosopher Johann Pestalozzi. And Johann Pestalozzi started a movement called Progressive Education. And with the Progressive Movement, it was a means to make sure that education was accessible to everyone. Now, I couldn't imagine that Pestalozzi captured or could fathom this digital age that we would be in centuries from his time. However, since we are in this digital age, we have to make sure, and several of my colleagues mentioned earlier about the digi digital divide, and that's where we have an economic inequality to where we may have lack of access to information and communication technologies. So a smartphone could be a less expensive way in which a student can electronically engage. Now, we can see from the statistics here that's giving to, given to us that our typical American students spend about 7.5 hours engrossing in some sort of creating, creative media. This is, a, this is about as long as they, they spend in school, right? So we see, for those of you who have children, your children may be engaged in the Facebook and uh, Twitter and the other social media sites, the YouTubes. I mean, I use, use YouTube religiously. I use YouTube to identify recipes to cook. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. I see some of you laughing out there. <laughs> OK, but we can also see where students pack 11 hours of content, 11 hours into that 7.5 hours. That's a lot of multitasking going on. Do you agree? Now, with smartphones, as I mentioned earlier, it's a cheaper way to help to bridge the gap with the digital divide, as well as it makes communication and materials more accessible. Now, there were some studies that was done, and it was one I would like to quote from Freeman, where Freeman stated that there were a student selected randomly to engage in a study where they were using various smartphone applications. And by using these smartphone applications and preparing, gathering material and preparing for a test, their test scores actually went up 30%. And that's a good thing. Now, uh, Study Blue reports that students using mobile applications as well as uh, spending 40, they're actually spending 40 more minutes of study time. And that's the key thing. I had uh, conversations with several colleagues today about students not engaging in study like they used to. Can anyone attest to that? Or students may say that they can't purchase the book for your class. However, with 
electronics, the electronic books that can be utilized on our mobile devices, they can or that will possibly encourage them to engage more in study and preparation. Now, one thing I want to get to quickly is this particular breakdown here. This basically shows how much t uh, percentage of time students utilize smartphones and the different applications in which they use smartphones. As far as 50% of the time taking notes, some of us may have utilized our smartphones, if not uh, our tablets, for taking notes today. Of course, there's 64% uh, for email, and I believe that number is higher. But we also have the higher percentages with our social media, with Facebook, Twitter, so on and so forth. But what I want to get to is to how I utilize certain applications. Now, I, I'm a proponent of Blackboard. I've been using Blackboard for quite some time now, but I'm able to post announcements, use, utilize the uh, virtual chat features, as well as discussion boards. But I, what I really want to focus on in the time I have left is for my undergraduate emergency management class. My, uh, Dr. Claiborne mentioned earlier about having his students utilize their smartphones to look up different uh, items that he directs them to in class. In our emergency management class, I uh, encourage my students to download particular apps that will help us in man-made and natural disasters. And we downloaded from Red Cross apps, first aid apps, so on and so forth. And some of the applications that the students have downloaded will even let them know if inclement weather is approaching and if something is happening in their respective areas, where is the nearest shelter. Also, there is a first aid app. All of our emergency management students have to engage in uh, and participate in CPR in a CPR course. But there is also a CPR app. Does anyone have the CPR app on your phone? That would be an ideal. I'll share this te a quick testimony, if you will, and I'll conclude from there. That will be a pertinent application to uh, uh, download to your phone. My uh, particular qu uh, story, I'll share this quickly, is um, there was an instance where uh, my mother had a, me a medical event to occur. So with me having the CPR app, I looked at her vitals and was able to see what types of symptoms that she was having. And I went to the CPR app. Of course, I had to do all of this in record time, looked up the various symptoms, and it basically told me what it was she was suffering from. And it was, fortunately, it was only a panic attack. So I knew how to address her based on the application that I pulled up from my smartphone. And I took this to the classroom and encouraged my emergency management students because they are going to be working in these emergency situations where they have to have these apps as well as other ones. So I'm going to conclude there. If you have any questions, uh, I'm sure uh, Dr. McHenry is going to a lot of time or you can feel free to text those questions and I'll be, feel, uh, be happy to answer those questions. Thank you.